Kabadbaran, officially the city of Kabadbaran, Cebuano, Dakbayan sa Kabadbaran, Tagalog, Lungsod ng Kabadbaran, or simply known as Kabadbaran City, is a sixth-class city and capital of the province of Agusan del Norte, Philippines. According to the 2015 census, it has a population of 73,639 people. Founded in 1894, the city rose from its Spanish period beginnings to become the premier town of Agusan del Norte. Its rich cultural heritage is evident in its preserved colonial period houses and its archaeological collections. On August 16, 2000, the seat of provincial government was transferred from Butuan to Kabadbaran through Republic Act 8811, although the provincial government still holds office in Butuan City, pending the actual transfer of provincial offices to the new capital. Kabadbaran was officially declared a city in 2007. Geography Kabadbaran lies 9 degrees north latitude and 125 degrees and 30 minutes east longitude in the northeastern part of Mindanao. Its boundaries are Tubay and Santiago to the north, Butuan Bay to the west, Magallanes and R.T. Romaldez to the south, and Sibagat, Agusan del Sur to the east. It is 29 kilometers 18 miles from Butuan. It is generally flat with rolling hills and swamplands in its western part. The highest of all mountains in the Caraga region, Mount Halong Halong, with an altitude of 2,012 meters 6 feet above sea level, rises in this city. Barangays Kabadbaran is politically subdivided into 31 barangays. Climate the city belongs to the second climatic type of the corona classification. No definite dry season in the place and maximum rainfall occurs from October to January. The average rainfall is 171.29 mm in per month, average annual temperature 28 degrees Celsius 82 degrees Fahrenheit. History Spanish period Traces of 12th century villages can be found near the waterways that pass through the territory of Kabadbaran. No records are found before the Spanish colonization except for a site in Sangan where Chinese ceramics from 15th to 16th century were found. Kabadbaran was first mentioned by the Spanish as a small village chosen by the Spanish authorities to be turned into a reduction called La Reunión de Kabarbaran. In 1867, the reduction was mostly populated by people from southern Agusan. Then in 1879, the reduction was disbanded. The inhabitants of the reduction went back to their places of origin while the remaining migrated to Tubay. In 1880-1881, the reduction was revived by Father Saturnino Urios, but was named Tulusa to honor Father Urios' hometown in Spain. In 1880, Tolosa was headed by the Teniente del Barrio Don Eduardo Carato. He petitioned to the Spanish authorities for the township application of Tolosa to be approved. In January 31, 1894, the petition was approved. The population and the economy grew, which was driven by agriculture and commerce. But the growth suddenly came to a halt when the revolution against Spain started. No significant turmoil affected the city until the coming of the American forces in 1901. American period When the Americans arrived, Spanish forces were forced to surrender. Included with them was Capt. Andres Otega. Under the Americans, the town was called again as Cabadbaran, according to Don Andres Otega's proposal. In 1903, the public education system was established with George Boner as the first American teacher. Public health also improved when Dr. Pedro Malvas was appointed as the public health officer in the 1920s and constructed sanitary toilets, deep wells and drainage canals. Public infrastructure was also improved by the Americans. Then in the 1935 Constitutional Convention, Apollonio. O-Y-O-K. Carato, a lawyer, represented Agusan. He then became the governor and congressman of the province of Agusan. The local economy grew when it started producing abaca from coconut plantations established by the Americans. Rice was also grown and remained as staple crop grown in the fields up to this day. 
The Agusan Surigao Road opened in the 1930s and several bus lines started public service along this route. World War II Kabadbaran had been occupied at one time by those resisting the Japanese occupation of Mindanao. Eventually the Japanese occupied it. On January 17, 1945, combined American and Filipino troops including recognized guerrillas fought a force of Japanese troops on the road between Kabadbaran and Butuan. The Japanese were in the process of reinforcing their garrison at Butuan. The guerrillas retreated when Japanese reinforcements arrived. The guerrillas also had depleted their ammunition. On March 31, 1945, Major Juan Rivera and a guerrilla detachment attacked the Japanese at Kabadbaran. The Japanese abandoned the post after an hour long battle. The general headquarters of the Philippine Commonwealth Army and Philippine Constabulary was active on 1945 to 1946 in Kabadbaran during an aftermath of World War II. Cityhood during the 11th Congress 1998 to 2001, Congress enacted into law 33 bills converting 33 municipalities into cities. However, Congress did not act on a further 24 bills converting 24 other municipalities into cities. During the 12th Congress 2001 to 2004, Congress enacted into law Republic Act No. 9009, RA 9009, which took effect on 30 June 2001. RA 9009 amended Section 450 of the Local Government Code by increasing the annual income requirement for conversion of a municipality into a city from 20 million pesos to 100 million pesos. The rationale for the amendment was to restrain, in the words of Senator Aquilino Pimentel, the mad rush of municipalities to convert into cities solely to secure a larger share in the internal revenue allotment despite the fact that they are incapable of fiscal independence. After RA 9009 went into effect, the House of Representatives of the 12th Congress adopted Joint Resolution No. 29, which sought to exempt from the 100 million pesos income requirement in RA 9009 the 24 municipalities whose cityhood bills were not approved in the 11th Congress. However, the 12th Congress ended without the Senate having approved Joint Resolution No. 29. During the 13th Congress 2004 to 2007, the House of Representatives re-adopted former Joint Resolution No. 29 as Joint Resolution No. 1 and forwarded it to the Senate for approval. However, the Senate again failed to approve the Joint Resolution. Following the suggestion of Senator Aquilino Pimentel, Senate President, 16 municipalities filed, through their respective sponsors, individual cityhood bills. The 16 cityhood bills each contained a common provision exempting it from the 100 million pesos income requirement of RA 9009. Exemption from Republic Act No. 9009 the city of XXX shall be exempted from the income requirement prescribed under Republic Act No. 9009. On the 22nd of December 2006, the House of Representatives approved the cityhood bills. The Senate also approved the cityhood bills in February 2007, except that of Naga, Cebu which was passed on 7 June 2007. These cityhood bills lapsed into law on various dates from March to July 2007 after President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo failed to sign them. The point of law at issue in 2007 was whether there had been a breach of Section 10, Article 10 of the 1987 Constitution, which provides, no province, city, municipality, or barangay shall be created, divided, merged, abolished or its boundary substantially altered, except in accordance with the criteria established in the local government code and subject to approval by a majority of the votes cast in a plebiscite in the political units directly affected and in each case the established criteria were far from met. In November 2008, Kabadbaran and 15 other cities lost their cityhood after the Supreme Court of the Philippines granted a petition filed by the League of Cities of the Philippines, and declared unconstitutional the cityhood law RA 9, which had allowed the town to acquire its city status. The Supreme Court ruled that they did not pass the requirements for cityhood. On 10 December 2008, the 16 cities affected acting together filed a motion for reconsideration with the Supreme Court. 
More than a year later, on the 22nd of December 2009, acting on said appeal, the court reversed its earlier ruling as it ruled that, at the end of the day, the passage of the amendatory law regarding the criteria for cityhood as set by Congress is no different from the enactment of a law, i.e., the cityhood laws specifically exempting a particular political subdivision from the criteria earlier mentioned. Congress, in enacting the exempting law S, effectively decreased the already codified indicators. Accordingly cityhood status was restored. But on 27 August 2010, the 16 cities lost their city status again, after the Supreme Court voted 7-6, with two justices not taking part, to reinstate the 2008 decision declaring as unconstitutional the Republic Acts that converted the 16 municipalities into cities. A previous law required towns aspiring to become cities to earn at least 100 million pesos annually, which none of the 16 did. On the 15th of February 2011, the Supreme Court made another volt face and upheld for the third time the cityhood of 16 towns in the Philippines. Finally, on the 12th of April 2011, the Supreme Court, in an en banc ruling delivered in Baguio City, affirmed the finality of the constitutionality of the 16 cityhood laws by resolving that. We should not ever lose sight of the fact that the 16 cities covered by the cityhood laws not only had conversion bills pending during the 11th Congress, but have also complied with the requirements of the LGC prescribed prior to its amendment by R.A. No. 9009. Congress undeniably gave these cities all the considerations that justice and fair play demanded. Hence, this court should do no less by stamping its imprimatur to the clear and unmistakable legislative intent and by duly recognizing the certain collective wisdom of Congress. Wherefore, the ad cautelum motion for reconsideration of the decision dated 15 February 2011 is denied with finality. On 28 June 2011 the Supreme Court directed the Clerk of Court to issue the entry of judgment on the cityhood case of 16 municipalities. Demographics Economy Kabadbaran produces several agricultural crops such as rice, corn, coconut, abaca, banana, and mango. The city has the biggest area planted with coconuts in Agusan del Norte with 18.46% of the total land area planted with the crop. The Kabadbaran also has a booming economy based on agro-industry, commerce and trade, source of several export and industrial products. It has also varied ecotourism destinations ranging from Caraga's highest peak, mile-long tunnels to adventure tourism sites. Tourism Like the popular destinations situated on neighboring provinces, Kabadbaran experiences a growing ecotourism industry. Annual climbs to reach Caraga's highest peak Mount Halong Halong 2012 meters above sea level has been organized by trekkers and mountaineers. There are also organized climbs to Mount Mas I, a plateau located in Putting Bado which has a mountain top lake. Locals have also put up white water tubing adventures along Kabadbaran River including repelling at some of the steep falls located at the foot of Mount Halong Halong. Mount Pongay, which is a hill that can be seen from the city proper, can be a great destination for families who wants to experience the value of the Holy Week's penance and devotion. It is also a destination for mountain climbers and for those people who wants to see the panoramic view of Agusan del Norte and Butuan Bay. Kabadbaran also has cheap inland pools by local residents that is an alternative to inland resorts. Many of these pools have sprouted through the years because of Kabadbaran's abundant fresh water which the city is known for. The city is also a beach destination for people from neighboring municipalities because of its crystal clear water and gray sandy beaches. The city has multiple hotels as well like Loretta's Gazebo, and Casa Alboro. Although Kabadbaran does not yet have any mainstream fast food restaurants, the city has various restaurants that offers Filipino, Japanese, and Chinese cuisine, an alternative to people who wants to have their fine dining locally than in the neighboring Butuan city. Festivals and celebrations 
Charter Day celebration, held annually every July 28, to commemorate the cityhood of Cabadbaran. Dagkot Festival, it is the sole important event during the fiesta celebration of Cabadbaran City. The week-long festivity features socio-civic activities, sporting events, trade fairs and capped by a grand street dancing parade and competition to celebrate the historic past and the bright future that awaits the city also in honor of Nuestra Señora de Candelaria. Musikinen Food and Music Festival, it is a celebrational tribute to the city culture and history as well as the local s cooking tradition language the entirety of Cabadbaran speaks Cebuano there are also significant number of people who speak Suriganan for these people have lived or have ancestries from the northern municipalities and speak in a variety of the Jabonganan, Mainitnan and Gigakitnan dialects of the Suriganan language Hiligaynon, Ware, Manobo languages, Butuanon, Boholano dialect, and Maranao have also less significant speakers in the area while English and Filipino are also widely used spoken. Government Provincial seat of government after the provincial government of Agusan del Norte attained the reclassification of their land conducted by the Department of Agriculture DA, in Brgy. Sangin, Cabadbaran City where the new capital building will be constructed, the land conversion by the Department of Agrarian Reform DAR, will soon follow. It will feature a modern design, including an employee's village at the back of the new building intended for the provincial employees. List of mayors The list of mayors that took office in Cabadbaran starting in 1896. Transportation by land. Cabadbaran City is accessible by bus from Bachelor Express or Surigao bus via Butuan Surigao routes or vice versa. There are also vans, jeep and multi-cabs that have routes towards both Surigao City and Butuan City which are stationed in the city transport terminal. By air and sea. Currently the city has no sea and airports. Cabadbaran can be reached by air from Manila and Cebu via Butuan City which is 30 kilometers away. From the Visayas, it can be accessed via the Nasipit Municipal Port in Nasipit, Agusan del Norte 60 kilometers, or via the Lipata Port and Verano International Port both in Surigao City, 79 kilometers, through the Maharlika Highway. Education Public schools Private schools and Agape Christian Academy Bishop Hayden Institute Cabadbaran Baptist Academy Candelaria Institute of Technology of Cabadbaran Inc. Mindanao Institute Colleges and Universities Caraga State University, Cabadbaran Campus Northern Mindanao Colleges Inc. Notable people Soledad Duterte, a Filipino teacher and activist, the mother of famous Philippine President Rodrigo Roa Duterte Rodrigo Roa Duterte 16th Philippine President, his mother was born in Cabadbaran City Edelmiro Amante, former Executive Secretary, Congressman, Assemblyman and Presidential Consultant for Mindanao Flagship Project Sorrel, John Amante, former Governor and current Representative. In 2014, he was awarded as Outstanding Filipino Achiever in Public Service by the Golden Globe Awards for Business Excellence Maria Angelica Rose del Amante, born in Cabadbaran City, former representative and current governor. Sister cities Makati, Philippines Naga, Cebu, Philippines Rizhao, China Attack, Philippines. References External links Philippine Standard Geographic Code, Kabadbaranon Network, 
Kabadbaran Today Philippine Information Agency